Okay. So, today we will discuss the power series of complex numbers and in particular case or uh, Taylor series around this. So, before going for the power series, let us say what is the series and the some test, few of the test which will be used to identify whether the given series is convergent or divergent one. Okay. So, we define the series. series as uh, given a sequence let z 1, z 2, z n and so on be a sequence of complex numbers of complex numbers. With the help of this series if we form the sequence form the sequence of its partial sums say s 1 which is the first term z 1, s 2 sum of the first two terms and s n with the sum of the first n terms of this sequence z n. Z n. Then s n is called the partial sum s n is called the partial sum of the infinite series infinite series sigma z m m is 1 to infinity that is a series having the term z 1 plus z 2 plus z 3 z m and so on, where all these z i's are complex numbers, they are all complex numbers. Okay. Then z 1, z 2, z i, i, these are called the terms of the series, which are called the terms of the series, say 1, this is series 1. Now, this series 1 is said to be a convergent series, if the sequence of its partial sum Converges. So, a convergent series, a convergent series, a convergent series is one whose sequence of partial sums partial sums sequence of partial sums converges. That is, this sequence 1 is said to be convergent, if the sequence of partial sum S n will converge, that is the sequence S n which we are getting as a sequence of partial sum, this is S n. Okay. So, this sequence S n, if it goes to S, as n tends to infinity, then we say the series 1 is convergent and S is called and then S the series 1 con is said to be convergent is said to be convergent and S is called the sum of this series sum of the series 1. This is what we are. Now, when we take the s minus s n, then basically you are getting the remaining terms of the series z n plus 1, z n plus 2 and so on up to say infinity. Then this we denoted as r n and is called the remainder of the series. Remainder this is known as the remainder of the series of the series 1. Okay. Now, in case if the series converges, then remainder goes to 0. So, obviously, clearly, if S n converges to S, if series 1 converges, then the remainder term R n will go to 0. 
R n will go to 0 is enter and that will give the criteria for this. Okay. Now, as we know these are all complex numbers and in case of the real we know the all sort results for the test for the convergence of the series the similar case similar type of the result continue to hold good for a complex series of complex numbers. And we have a basic result that result says a series a series uh, sigma z m m is 1 to infinity where the z m is u m plus i times of v m say m is 1 to infinity where u m is the real part of this complex number z v m is the complex uh, imaginary part of this complex number z. So, a series of this converges if and only if if and only if the series sigma of u m m is 1 to infinity and the series sigma of v m m is 1 to infinity converges converges okay. and the sum is it converges and and let u and v v be the sum of v the sum of these real series then the series <coughs> sigma of z m m is 1 to infinity will converge and converge to the sum i plus u v. So, that is the first result which we have. Another result which we have for the test that if a series converges if a series sigma z m m is 1 to infinity converges then then the nth term of this series that is z m n m h term of this when m tends to infinity must go to 0 that is the necessary condition for a series to be a convergent one that is now if limit of z m as m tends to infinity if this limit does not tends to 0 does not tends to 0 or does not hold or does not hold then the series will diverge sigma z m 1 to infinity will diverge. So, this is basically a test for a divergence of the series diverge okay, for this. Again the proof is same a similar as the proof of in case of a real variables. So, we are not good touching this. Now, here is we have seen uh, we have seen in this theorem is that this one way is true that is if the series converges then the n -th term will go to 0. However, the converse is not true if the n -th term of a series goes to 0 then the corresponding series may or may not be a convergent one that we can see. So, remark is the remark says that the z m the n -th term goes to 0 is the necessary conditions only is necessary for convergence of the series of the series sigma z m 1 to infinity, but it is not sufficient. sufficient and the reason is very simple suppose I take a example say series sigma 1 by n 1 to infinity. Now, this is an harmonic series which diverges, but here the nth term 1 by n tends to 0 
clear. So, though the n a term goes to 0, but the series is not convergent. So, it is uh, only a necessary condition, but not con sufficient condition. Another results which we also use for is the which is Cauchy convergence criteria. Cauchy convergence criteria, which is valid for a function of a real variables or series of a real variable. We the similar things also holds good in case of a series of complex variables or complex numbers. So, what this is said a series sigma z m m is 1 to infinity this series is convergent if and only if if and only if for a given f sin r for every for given f sin r for every given f sin r greater than 0 there exist there exist a positive integer a positive integer capital n such which depends on f sin r such that modulus of s n plus p minus s n this modulus is less than f sin r for every n greater than capital n and p is 1 2 3 and so on that is the mini that is mod of z n plus 1 plus z n plus 2 and so on up to say z n plus p this is less than epsilon for all n greater than capital n p is 1 2 3 and so on so what is so is that a series will be a convergent series if the sequence of its partial sum satisfy this Cauchy convergence criteria z s n plus p minus s n remains less than epsilon not a series said to be absolutely convergent absolute convergence and conditional convergent a series a series sigma z m of complex number z m is called <coughs> is called absolutely convergent absolutely convergent if the series if the series of the absolute values absolute value values of the terms that is mod of z m that is sigma of mod z m m is 1 to infinity is convergent. So, if a series with its absolute terms absolute value of the terms converges then we say the original series converges absolutely. Now, if the series if the series sigma of z m 1 to infinity converges, what the corresponding series of its absolute terms diverges, then we say then we say the series converges, then we say the series sigma of z m 1 to infinity converges conditionally. So, that is the conditionally convergent series. Uh, for example, we have seen that uh, alternating series 
if it look the series 1 minus half plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 4 and so on. Now, this series converges by Leibniz test is a term all alternative positive negative they are of decreasing nature and absolute value and limiting value tends to 0. So, Leibniz test says this series converges. However, if we consider a series with of all of its absolute terms then this becomes a harmonic series which diverges. So, we say the original series converges conditionally that is what we want. Okay. Obviously, if a series is convergent absolutely it is convergent also. Okay. So, that is now next result which will give you some test that is a comparison test. what this comparison test says if a series is given and we can find a convert if a series z 1 plus z 2 plus z n and so on be given is given and corresponding to this series if we are having another series convergence series of these scalars and we can find and we can find a convergence series a convergent series uh, say b 1 plus b 2 plus b n and so on with non negative terms all terms are non negative with non negative terms. Such that such that the corresponding terms of the series that is z n is dominated by b n for each n and this is true for each n. Then the comparison test say then the given series given series sigma z n 1 to infinity will converge converges and in fact it converges absolutely and in fact even absolutely this is the result so what problem uh, what is the main uh, idea is that if we want to test the given series sigma of zm to be convergent then with the help of these terms of the series identify a sequence b n s of positive terms such that this inequality is settled that is b n always dominates to mode of z n over z n mode of z n then if the right hand side series converges then the left hand side will also converge and since absolute terms are less than so it will converge absolutely also. So, that is one then geometric series of course, is very stand up on the um, geometric series the series sigma uh, of course, q to the power m m is 1 to infinity we are this is 1 plus q plus q square plus q to the power m and so on this is the terms of it. So, m is 0 to infinity say m is 0 to infinity converges with the sum with the sum 1 over 1 minus q if mod q is less than 1 and diverges diverges if mod q is greater than equal to 1 again we are not so going for the proof because it is just parallel on the parallel lines as we did in case of real variables. Okay. So, this then another test which is known as the ratio test for the uh, series if a series sigma z m m is 1 to infinity if the series 
with all terms to be non-zero, with all terms are non-zero, with z m is non-zero and m is 1, 2, 3 and so on has the property has the property that for every n for every n or for every uh, m greater than greater than some number some capital n some positive integer capital n that is greater uh, than that is mod of z m plus 1 over mod of z m z m greater than and this um, get a full sum n and mod of z m plus is less than or equal to q which is less than 1 where q is fixed q is fixed is fixed then this series then this the series sigma z m m is 1 to infinity this series converges absolutely converges absolutely now if this ratio this ratio is strictly greater than 1 strictly greater than or equal to 1 or equal to 1 for all n greater than say n n then the series then m sorry m then the series sigma z m 1 to infinity will diverge diverges diverges so this is what ratio test is so what is the basic ratio test is say a series is given and we wanted to test the convergence or the divergence of this series then what this uh, ratio test says that first you look all the terms of the series are non negative are non zero if so, then find out the ratio of the term to its preceding terms in absolute value z m plus 1 over z m takes its absolute value because these are all complex numbers. Now, if this absolute value for all m for all m after a certain stage remains less than or equal to some fixed number q and if this q is less than 1 the corresponding series will converge. Now, in case if this ratio is always be greater than or equal to 1 after a certain stage then the series will diverge. So, that is the ratio test for Then another ratio test which is also called the ratio test this is basically a comparison type is it not you are comparing the uh, next uh, term to its preceding terms and then finding the ratio with that. Another uh, test which is also a ratio test where we take the nth root uh, of this. So, nth root test also we say or other. Now, here what we have seen is that we are taking these terms z 1 plus z 2 z n and so on. This is a series we are fixing a capital N okay. and once you fix up a capital N then after this capital N on board the different ratio of the term to its preceding term is always be less than or equal to q. So, this inequality must be satisfied after a certain stage and onward, which is not so easy to find out the q. So, okay. so in that case, if as this ratio has a limit when m is sufficiently large, then the same ratio test can be put up in a very simple way and where, where you need not to find q. Okay. So, that is the another version of this. Uh, a slightly better result than this. So, we can say this is the first uh, ratio test in another form. If the series, if the series sigma z m 
m is 1 to infinity with z m is not equal to 0 n is m is 1 2 3 and so on is such that the limit of this ratio z m plus 1 over z m as m tends to infinity if this limit is suppose say l then then the series sigma z m 1 to infinity converges absolutely absolutely if converges absolutely if l is less than 1 the series sigma u n diverges if l is strictly greater than 1 and for l is equal to 1 if l is 1 then the test fails then test fails it means nothing can be predicted then nothing can be predicted no conclusion so in this case the series may be convergent may be diverging means we have a example where this ratio test is 1 <coughs> series diverges ratio test is 1 series converges also for example let's take it so first taking proof we are just dropping say uh, in support of c we give an example suppose i take a series say series 1 plus 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 and so on this series here z m plus 1 by z m mod of this this is nothing but what z m plus 1 by z m is m over m plus 1. So, when you take the limit m tends to infinity limit m goes to infinity this is divided by m. So, finally, you are getting 1, but this series we have seen is a diverging one divergent series then the series 1 plus 1 by 2 square 1 by uh, say 3 square 1 by 4 square and so on now this series is of the form sigma 1 by n to the power p where p is 2 1 by n to the power p where p is 2 it may this series is a convergent one because it is a standard result 1 to infinity. So, this is a convergence series, but here if I take the ratio mod z n plus 1 or z m plus 1 over z m what you are getting is that m over m plus 1 whole square and limit of this as m tends to infinity again it is 1. So, the l is 1 you cannot give any guarantee about the nature of the series it may be convergent may be diverging that is what it is. Okay. So, this is all then another form of the ratio test we uh, if the series is such if the series if a series z 1 plus z 2 z n and so on is such that is such that for every for every n greater than some integer capital n the mode of z n to the power 1 by n is less than equal to q which is less than 1 where q is fixed fixed then the series converges series 
sigma of z n 1 to infinity converges again absolutely converges absolutely and if mod of z n power 1 by n is greater than or equal to 1 then the series diverges equivalent to this if this limit exists in case if the limit exists then we can say if the limit of this limit of mod z n to the power 1 by n as n tends to infinity is suppose l then the series sigma of z n 1 to infinity converges absolutely if l is less than 1 diverges if l is greater than 1 and test fails if l is equal to 1. Again for in this support of 3 if I take this support of 3 again choose the example sigma 1 by n and sigma 1 by n square 1 to infinity 1 to this is diverging this is convergent and in both the case both the case mod z n to the power 1 by n as n tends to infinity comes out to be 1. Okay. So, this is what we get it. So, this uh, gives a rough idea about the various test which will be used for getting the nature of the series given series whether it is convergent or divergent one and it is very effective tools these are particularly when we judge for the radius or region of the convergence of the power series. So, now let us come to the main thing is the power series. The power series a series a series of the form sigma a n z minus z naught to the power say m n when n is 0 to infinity. That is if I expand it, it gets a naught plus a 1 z minus z naught plus a 2 z minus z naught whole square and so on where z is a complex number complex numbers uh, complex number complex variable a naught a 1 a 2 these are all complex these are all complex numbers and these are known as the coefficients of the power series of the power series of the power series 1 let it be this one of the power series 1 and z naught z naught is a complex constant Now, here z is a complex variable you can say variable okay? complex number is variable and these are the complex constant numbers constant number these are the constants okay? complex constant these are the complex variables because you keep on giving the value of z you get a different power, uh, points power, some of this power series. So, z naught is a fixed complex constant complex constant it may be real also okay then n is called the center of the power series called the center of the power series 1 power series 1 
So, what is the power series? As a series of this form a naught plus a 1 z minus z naught plus a 2 z minus z naught whole square and so on, where z naught is a fixed point which is called the center of the series a naught a 1 a 2 n these are the complex constants or real constants uh, and z is a variable one. Then this, this form of the series is known as the power series. Okay? This form. Now, in particular case, when we take z naught to be 0, that is a series of the form a naught plus a 1 z a 2 z square and so on, that is the sigma a n z to the power n 0 to infinity. Then this is a power series in z be centered 0, this is the power series in z in the complex variable z in the uh, power series in the powers of z in the z means in the powers of z in the powers of z with center 0. Okay. Now, again when we look this power series either 1 or maybe 2 then since z is a variable 1. So, when you give a particular value to z then it becomes it gives a one series one power series or one series of complex number that is all. So, that series may converge or may diverge also. So, it depends on the z point to point the series will converge diverge like that. Okay. <coughs> but in the case of the power series of complex numbers we have a very peculiar things that if a series converges then it will converge at every point inside the disk with central z naught and diverges outside if it is. So, we have to identify the region of the convergence where the series is convergent or whether it diverges. So, let us see the few behavior of the convergence behavior of power series. behavior uh, convergence behavior of power series. Okay. So, what he says is there are the power series which converge everywhere in the complex plane, there are all the power series which converges only at a singleton point there are all the power series which converges only in a region in the form of the disk. Okay. So, let us see the various example where this series converge means that uh, first is let us consider this series sigma z to the power n n is 0 to infinity that is 1 plus z z square z cube and so on. Now, this is a geometric series and obviously, this series when mod z is less than 1 converges, when mod z greater than or equal to 1 diverges. So, this series converges absolutely in the region mod z less than 1. It means this is a power series centered at 0 with a radius 1 if I draw then at all points inside this the series will converge absolutely and diverges outside and diverges outside and diverges and diverges outside if mod z is greater than 1. Okay. But, what about this point when you take the point on the circumference, when we take the point on the circumference we cannot say right now what will be the behavior. Say for example, z equal to 1 1 1 then it will diverge. If we take the z equal to minus 1 then what happens is some point is plus minus plus minus alternate series. So, again it will die by. Okay. So, we cannot say anything about this except when uh, sorry uh, for uh, z is equal to 1 what happens there it is 1 plus 1 plus 1. So, it will die by. So, we can get greater than equal to 1. Okay. Now, another example let us take if we look the C series sigma g, uh, 0 to infinity 
z to the power n over factor n factor 0 is 1. So, z to the power n factor n if we look the series is 1 plus z plus z square by factorial 2 z cube over factorial 3 and so on. Now, this series uh, for some point of z whether it is convergent or it converges to all point of z or it never converges let us see. So, it is a series of the complex variable apply the ratio comparison test or ratio uh, the test what is our uh, earlier test which we have seen uh, that one no this is the test u n plus 1 over yeah apply this test okay then we get the ratio test so what is our z n plus 1 m plus 1 over z m let us apply this test so let consider this this is the first u m plus 1 so i will say z dash z dash is z m plus 1 over factorial m plus 1 and z dash m is z m z m oh, oh, factorial m modulus of this take the limit as m tends to infinity ok. Now, what happens to this? This is the mod z over m plus 1 limit m tends to infinity. Now, whatever the z may be once you fix up the z it will have a finite value mod z ok. So, when m is sufficiently large the value will be 0. So, it is always less than 1 for all z lying in a complex plane it means the series is convergent for every point in the complex plane. So, we say the power series converges. So, this power series converges absolutely absolutely for every z in the complex plane C. Okay, that is now let us look the other uh, series suppose I take third example look the series sigma factorial n z to the power n 1 to infinity or 0 to infinity even 0 is first term is 0 ok uh, first term is 1 because this is 1 plus z. Now, if you look the series what is this uh, is all the terms of the set is positive uh, mod z. Uh, so, if we apply this ratio test by ratio test what we get z n plus 1 over means factorial n plus 1 factorial n mod z limit of this as n tends to infinity goes to infinity because whatever the z may be this n plus 1 will come and it will tends to infinity. it means this series diverges everywhere everywhere except what everywhere where z is different from 0 because when z is 0 it reduced to a single value only 0 all the terms are uh, sorry 1 only 1. So, it is convergent and in fact every power series converges at the center that is uh, uh, the result which is very. So, what we have seen through these examples that behavior of the power series depends on the coefficients basically because this z to the power n this is the n term with the coefficient a n. So, if a n s are changing the correspondingly the behavior of the series changes ok. So, we wanted to have a result where the convergence or the divergence of the series can be easily identified with the help of the coefficients a n s only that is if you apply that result on the coefficients you will find out you will say whether the series is convergent divergent or uh, or neither uh, means only one point or all points like that. So, before that let us see one uh, few results which are valid for a general power series the result is Tholam 
convergence of a power series convergence of a power series so first uh, the result says every power series power series that is sigma n n is 0 to infinity n z minus z naught to the power n n is 0 to every power series converges at the center at the center z naught at the center z naught second result says if the power series 1 if let it be power 1 if the power series 1 converges at a point z say z 1 which is different from z naught then it converges it converges absolutely for every z for every z closer to z naught closer to z naught then z 1 then z 1 that is the set of those point z which satisfy this condition that mod of z minus z naught is strictly less than mod of z naught 1 minus z naught then all such point at all such point the series will converge absolutely and third you know, says if the power series 1 diverges diverges at this point z say z equal to z 2 then it will diverge then it diverges for every z for every z further away further away from z naught then then z 2 that is that is the point z minus z naught is greater than the point z 2 minus z naught that is for those z for all z we satisfying this condition that is for this ok. So, what is the meaning of this is suppose I have a power series whose center is z naught its center is z naught and a point is suppose this is the point this is the region of the convergence here is the region of divergence this is the region of divergence uh, we will see ok. Uh, what he says is suppose we have a point z 1 here ok z 1 here and if the series converges at a point z 1 then it will converge at every point inside this z 1 inside this z 1 that is if z 1 is this point then it will converge at every point inside this and if suppose z 2 is somewhere here this is our z 2 and if the series diverges then it will diverge here ok here it will converge and at the point z naught always it is convergent. So, the first part is follows quickly because when z is z naught this reduced to a single point a naught. So, series is convergent. So, nothing to prove. the second part b a obvious ok obviously true 
b part if the power series converges at some point z 1 this is given. So, suppose given the power series 1 converges at the point z equal to z 1. So, it means that is the when you substitute z equal to z 1 then you are getting this series sigma a n z 1 minus z 0 to the power n 0 to 1 converges. And the necessary condition for the convergence is the n a term must go to 0, n a term must go to 0 as n tends to infinity because this is the necessary condition for a convergence of the series. So, if the n a term is tending to 0, it means it is a bounded function after a certain stage it remains less than or equal to m. So, we can say from here there exists an m positive such that mod of a n z 1 minus z 0 to the power is less than or equal to m for every n 1 0 1 2 3 and so on. Okay. Now, consider this term a n z minus z 0 to the power mod n. Now, this will be equal to mod n z 1 minus z 0 to the power n and then mod n z minus z 0 uh, n is common sorry n is okay divide by z 1 minus z 0 to the power n. Now, this is less than equal to now this term is less than equal to m. So, it is less than equal to m and this term is z minus z 0 this n z 1 minus z 0 to the power n, but z minus z 0 is strictly less than z 0 minus z 0. So, this is less than 1 basically. So, which is this is less than as n tends to infinity this will go to 0. So, it is tending to 0. Okay. So, this will go to 0 basically m into j con therefore, <coughs> this will tend. Okay. So, the series a n z minus z naught to the power n 0 to infinity is dominated by this series sigma q to the power n 0 to infinity where q stands for z minus z naught z 1 minus z naught which is strictly less than 1. So, this is geometric series convergent. Therefore, this series will converge. Okay. <coughs> so, original series converge. Third part C follows in the same. Suppose it diverges. Uh, here we wanted to say it diverge. Suppose it is convergent. Then by the previous result, it should converge at every point here, is it not? If at any point it converges, it will converge at z 2 also, which contradicts. So, that part is so. So, third part is so, is see, if it converges all z greater than z 2, then by previous v it must converge at z 2 a contradiction. Contradiction and contradiction leads contradiction shows the proof is okay. Okay. So, thank you. That is all.